Hi fellas, today I want to talk about infill, but not in the way you may think. I'm not going to describe different types of infill, there are already a lot of other videos about it here on YouTube. Instead, I want to talk about the idea of supplementing fixed internal wing structures in 3D printed RC planes with infill. So you basically design your plane in the CAD and instead of hours of fiddling around with the perfect placement and type of support structures in the wing and fuselage parts, just let the slicer do all the hard work, choose a proper infill and enjoy some uncomplicated 3D printed fun. Let's first take a look at the regular, most common technique of designing 3D printed planes. You create your basic shape in your CAD of choice. Think about where to place spars, recesses, lock mechanisms, etc. And then you start the main part of the job, trying to tell the slicer how to properly print the parts with 0% infill, without breaking the outer surface of the wing and with a minimum number of retracts or even not a single retract. This process takes a lot of time and testing, even if you already know your numbers and which tolerances to use to avoid misinterpretation of the slicer. Knowing this and having tried it once yourself, nobody will ever complain about the prices of good STLs for 3D printers anymore. But wait, what if we just skip the boring stuff, create our shape, insert some recesses and give it a go? Have we just found the holy grail of quick to design, easy to print, 3D printed RC planes? The answer is yes and no, just like any other answer, when it comes to finding an easy solution for a complex problem. Yes, using infill instead of a fixed defined structure will save you tons of time. Yes, the parts coming out of the printer will look beautiful without wrapping your head around nozzle paths and single retracts. Yes, if the plane is reinforced properly, it will even fly. But why do we spend dozens and hundreds of hours defining ribs? There are some major drawbacks for infill as an inner structure in 3D printable RC plane designs. First, printing time. If you compare a wing with a fixed inner structure and the same wing with infill, will take 5% chi rate here as it is a realistic value for an average size 3D printer with one outer wall, we will see that you'll have to wait way longer for your plane to be printed because infill is just everywhere and not only in exactly the spots we need the outer shell to be reinforced. Second, even more important, infill is meant to produce density in a part. It supports the structure the same amount all over the whole shape, whilst the defined ribs are located in exactly the right spot and with exact the right spacing between them. This way the designers ensures not only that the outer walls perimeters, don't warp, but also, and that is the important thing, the optimal load distribution with the lowest possible weight. This is a thing regular infill is really not capable of. It is designed to support top layers and figurines, not perimeters of an aircraft wing. So you're telling me infill is an absolute no-go for 3D printed planes? Well, no. There are of course some particular designs utilizing infill. For the use of infill with lightweight PLA, you just have to keep in mind that most standard PLA profiles, which serve as a base for lightweight PLA profiles in most cases, use pretty high printing speeds for infill, but lightweight PLA needs some time to activate its expanding additives. So you will have to decrease the speed not only for outer walls, but also infill a lot. Depending on the amount of infill in your desired structure, that slows down printing time a little bit to more than 150% as you can see here. On some parts of planes it absolutely makes sense. For example, Front fuselage parts can be designed for use of infill with two outer walls when using lightweight PLA. This makes rock solid front fuselage sections. With the sacrifice of just a bit of additional weight, which doesn't matter because most planes need additional weight in the front anyways. Infill can also be used in the wings in some designs where weight and print time doesn't matter that much. Or the plane's intended use is just soaring around in slow-mo. 
But for the vast majority of performance-oriented 3D printed RC planes, the way to go is definitely uh, defined in a structure as the parts become way more solid, have shorter print times, and will take loads and forces way better. I hope I could give you a nice little insight on designing 3D printed today. Looking forward to serving you more content soon. Until then, guten Flug!